Ma Liang and Ma Su. Were two of five brothers known as the Five Changs, all of whom were celebrated for their intellect. Their eldest brother, Ma Liang, was deemed to be the most talented, with Chen Shu describing him as an outstanding elite who was incorruptible and honest. Chen regarded him as one of Shu's best officials, along with Dong He, Liu Ba, Chen Zhen, and Dong Yun. Ma Su displayed obvious talents in military theories and became admired by many, including Zhu Ge Liang, until his blunder at Xieting caused his downfall. Much dramatization shrouds the death of Ma Su. It was said he attempted to flee, but it's not specified at what point he did this. When he was later captured, however, he seemed to have faced death with dignity. The five Chang style names all contain Chang, hence their nickname, and they were locals from Yi Cheng County of Xiangyang. There was a saying in their hometown, of the five Changs in the Ma family, white rouse is the most Liang, Liang meaning good. This acknowledges that Ma Liang, who had white strands of hair in his eyebrows, was the most famous and talented of the brothers at that time. One account claims the two brothers came into Liu Bei's service around 205 when he was still a guest of Liu Biao. Another record states that around 209 after Liu Shi passed away, Liu Bei took charge of Jing province then recruited Ma Liang as an assistant officer. He was such a close friend of Liu Bei's strategist Zhu Ge Liang that they became sworn oath brothers. As the intellectuals under Liu Bei discussed, planned, and strategized their lord's next move, Ma Su enjoyed displaying his talents and abilities that surpassed many others. Chief advisor Zhu Ge Liang became impressed with Ma Su's extensive knowledge in military strategy. When Liu Bei started his campaign against Liu Zhang and Yi, Ma Su followed him in the army and served as a military advisor along with Pang Tong and Fa Zheng. Ma Liang remained behind to assist Guan Yu's administration over Jing. When Luo Castle fell, Ma Liang wrote to his honoured elder brother Zhu Ge Liang, congratulating him on his success in helping Liu Bei in his great enterprise. He advised to seek help from the talented men of Yi, whilst also helping the less fortunate beneath them. He poetically compared governing a state to arranging beautiful tunes that become instruments that don't sow disharmony among the people. He was later promoted to serve as a senior clerk in the office of the general of the left, an appointment Liu Bei nominally held under the Han government. Ma Liang was later appointed as an emissary to meet Sun Chuan, so he sought out Zhu Ge Liang's assistance in being introduced. Zhu Ge told him, you ought to try writing something yourself, so Ma Liang wrote out a draft. I've been sent by our wise lord to convey my respects, bring gifts and extend prosperity towards our friendship. I'm a fortunate man of talent from Jing in the Shu region. I'm rarely rash in action and yet have the virtue of seeing matters through to the end. With a calm heart, I turn my head towards you, hoping you dare to accept me and give me assistance so I can accomplish my mission. Sun Chuan received and treated Ma Liang very respectfully. At some point before 219, Ma Su was transferred to the troubled Yue Shi commandery to administrate over its numerous indigenous tribes. Yue Shi became the site of a significant tribal revolt led by Gao Ding in 218. He refused to accept Liu Bei's authority and took the opportunity to rebel whilst Liu and Tao wrestled over Han Zhong. Leader of the Su tribe Gao Ding attacked Xindao County, but Li Yan deftly led his unit to defend the area and repelled the tribal aggression. With help from Li Yan, who bent Gao Ding in battle, Ma Su did well in keeping order in the commandery. Liu Bei declared himself emperor in 221, then attacked Sun Quan at Xiaoting later that year. In accordance with his orders, Ma Liang found success in persuading the tribal people of Wuling to join in Xu's mission. The armies advanced until they arrived at Xiaoting in Yadao. Once there, Liu Bei set up his camps closely linked to one another. Ma Liang followed the road to Henshan, where he was further sent to manage the affairs of the Yi and Man tribes of Wuling. Lu Zun defeated Liu Bei at Xiaoting in 222, where Ma Liang was killed in action. When Liu Bei retreated to Bai Li Cheng, he appointed Ma Liang's son, Ma Bing, as a cavalry commandant. Before the Shu Emperor died the following year, he warned Zhu Ge Liang that Ma Su's knowledge and speech exceeded his real abilities and should not be given important appointments. Even with this, Zhu Ge did not heed the warning, and he soon appointed Ma Su as a military consultant under him shortly after Liu Bei died. The two were very close, and would often hold discussions from dusk till dawn. Before Zhu Ge Liang set off to pacify the rebellion in Nanjong, he asked for Ma Su's advice, who suggested they focus on winning the hearts of the Nanjong people. Nanjong relies on the distance from the capital and its difficult access. If we submit them and leave, tomorrow they would rebel again. You are about to engage the whole state and army for a northern expedition against the powerful rebels. 
When the people of Nanjong learn that the authority of its government is weak whilst you are occupied in the north, they'll immediately rebel again. If all the tribes were exterminated, however, this would end future worries. That would be inhumane. This is not the way of the benevolent man, and moreover, it would take a lot of time. I learned that in the way of using troops, attacking the heart is the wisest, attacking cities is worst, psychological warfare is best, and armed warfare is the worst. I hope that you, my lord, will focus on subduing their hearts. Zhuge was greatly impressed and followed Ma Su's advice. Many times he forgave Meng Huo in order to gain the trust of the people of the South, and so until the end of Zhu Geliong's life, the South did not rebel again. At the time of Zhu Geliong's first northern campaign, he had veteran leaders such as Wei Yan and Wu Yi who could lead the army as a vanguard. Despite them receiving recommendations to lead, the inexperienced Ma Su was chosen to command the front instead. His forces encountered Zhang He at Jie Ting. Ma Su made an incorrect judgement to camp atop a hill which gave him the advantage in terms of observation and a place to launch attacks. Wang Ping recognised the blunder and advised against it but to no avail. He was granted a thousand troops however so took them to camp close to the Shu army's water supply near the foot of the hill. As Wang Ping predicted, his position at the water source soon came under attack by Zhang He who easily dispatched a smaller Shu force. The objective had been secured by Wei which led to Ma Su's troops becoming isolated and starved for water. Zhang He then launched an attack against the Shu main camp itself, where he easily found victory. Wang Ping did his best to establish a retreat route, whilst beating his drums in a way that caused Zhang He to fear there was an ambush. Zhang He secured his position without pursuing. When Zhu Geliong arrived later on, he could not force his enemy from their location and had to withdraw. According to a record from Xiang Lang's biography, he did not report Ma Su as he fled as they were close friends. It makes no statement if it was during or after the battle. Even though Ma Su survived, his army suffered a heavy defeat, and it was only due to Wang Ping's efforts that the Shu army was able to regroup. Ma Su was soon arrested and executed by a tearful Zhu Ge Liang as a way to soothe the masses. Before his execution, he wrote a letter to Zhu Ge Liang. You, wise lord, regarded me like a son, and myself looked upon you as a father. I dearly hope that this is the righteousness of the execution of Kun, leading to the rise of the state of Yu. I hope that our whole life's relationship is not reduced to this. Though I shall die, I shall bear no resentments against the Yellow Earth. Many among the army wept greatly for Ma Su's death. Xi Yang Wan later visited Han Zhong where he spoke to Zhuge Liang, asking if he had any regrets in putting a man of wise counsel to death before the empire had been unified. Zhuge teared up as he explained how they could not confuse the laws. If they abandon the law, there will be no means for which to quell the rebels. Shi Zuo Qi harshly criticised Zhu Geliang for his choice. Choose in a remote location, with less population and talent than the central plains. To be so severe with punishments against men of talent without applying the principle of three defeats made Zi Zuo Qi think it was appropriate that Zhu Ge failed to unite the realm. Taking into account that Liu Bei had already warned him that Ma Su was not so capable in actual warfare, Zi Zuo Qi questioned if Zhu Geliang was even able to refuse Ma Su and stated, it seems hard to include Zhu Geliang when speaking of the wise. Zhu Geliang took care of Ma Su's wife and children after his death, and Ma was later deemed responsible for the failure of the First Northern Campaign. At his own request, Zhu Geliang was demoted for his failure, but Wang Ping on the other hand was promoted for minimalising the casualties. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.